we wanted to focus this session on kind of an introduction, but also generic integrations. Let's just throw out a scenario. And since uh, we like to think that we're uh, Legos, we're just going to take a simple web service, website called Rebrickable. It's totally public. If you guys want to go out and go to Rebrickable, it's just a catalog of Lego parts. And, and what we're going to do is do a simple web service query that will bring back information. And in this case, uh, it's giving us all the information about part 301. Uh, but the, the call that we'll make will bring back a bunch. And then we're going to show how to display that with an Appian. All right. So in the design environment, uh, we would create a new interface object. An interface object is one that calls a web service. You can name it whatever you want to name it uh, and put it anywhere in the server you want. So for this particular rebrickable example, I've already pre-baked one with the interface. So in Appian, calling web services is straightforward. Uh, you have fields to enter all the information as far as the URL of the web service you want to call, what kind of security you need to put on it, what method you're going to use for that web service call, query parameters, uh, any kind of headers you need to put in it, and the response. So I parameterize this so that if I want to, I can actually insert which particular part that I'm going for. Rebrickable is returning just one result, and it's telling me information like this particular part was built from 1979 to 2022. If you're a Lego nerd, everything you need to know out here for you. So this becomes a rule with an app. Yet. And the rule can be used just by syntactically accessing the name of the rule itself. If we go to the visual design environment, so building out uh, what people see. So, you know, you can start from a template, just a quick, give you an idea of layouts. These layouts you can do um, for, you build it once and you write it anywhere. So if you're interested in what this looks like on say a phone, this is what it will automatically look like with that. no extra development whatsoever. Really nice having the performance of building two environments uh, at the same time. Go back to starting from scratch, going and grab a read-only grid and a read-only grid will allow me to display information such as like a query from a database. If I have a two-dimensional data and a variable, I can display that. I'm going to use an expression and the only reason I don't use a rule is I want to actually scope into the expression. There's parts of the return that I don't want to know, like the status code 200, you know, that's not important. I don't want to display that. Let's edit this. And I want all Lego parts, so that's why I'm putting null in here as opposed to the part number. And I know the JSON that comes back is a tree structure. That's results.body.result. So here's the result from that query, comes back. And there's stuff here that we don't need. So we can use the graphical environment to say, uh, I don't need this particular field. But I do know that there's a part image and, and I want to see the actual image as opposed to the text. So I can go into the display options of this column and say, I want the web image as opposed to um, the text. Quite simple to query information, bring it back and visualize it with an app. Appian is low code. So we're trying to get rid of all the complexity around things like uh, uh, integrations. So typically when you're working with a Java programming language, the JSON that comes back is this huge block of textual code. And then it's your responsibility to use some kind of library to parse it out so that you can get the information that you want. Um, you know, it, it's always a, a, a troublesome experience for every developer to have to go through this anytime you want to do an integration. And uh, Appian has handled that right out of the box by changing it into... Um, a data type that's e easily scopable within the product.